All right, people, I'm Evil Mastery, and welcome to my March question mark balance prediction. So, uh, I actually have a definitive date. I think that the list will probably go up on March 14th. And of course, we don't know when the list will go up because Konami decided that there's going to be no more end dates. Thank you, Konami. But uh, despite us not knowing when the list will be up, actually, one of my viewers and subscribers actually find a pattern when it comes to when they actually put the list up on the site when they actually update and it's always on a Thursday so I, I predict that the list will be sometime in March took the Thursday going up into consideration with uh, YCS's and that and I think that the list will go up on March 14th that's a Monday right after YCS Las Vegas so uh, that being said I'm hoping that I'm uh, not only predicting what they're putting but predicting when they're going to do the list up as well so if you're new to my channel, you're just here for the balance prediction, no, I'm a very long-winded person. Uh, I go into detail and talk about a lot of things, discussions, and when I predict, I take a lot of things into consideration. Uh, precedence, uh, that money to be made, value, uh, that I into consideration, no bias. I, I don't put any bias, so you won't be hearing me say, you know, you know, free my nigga Stratos because he should have been banned in the first place because, you know, he should have been banned, he, definitely, with the work he's putting in. But uh, that's another topic, another topic, so... Uh, on, the, on my band description, I don't think there's going to be a, too many cards moved. This is going to be a fairly uh, short list, and I also think that Konami's list is going to be short as well. So, of course, today uh, that this video is going up is February 1st. I always try to get my balance predictions up a month of the time that either the list was supposed to go up when there's a definitive end date, or when I uh, predict that the list will go up, which I believe is going to be sometime in March. So, that being said, February 1st, let's go ahead and get the ban list prediction on. And you guys do not, absolutely do not want to sit here and talk and hear me talk and be all long winded about this ban list prediction, it's in the description. Just go ahead, click the description, pull it down, bam, there it is, right for your view. You can go ahead, pop in, look at what I predict. You don't have to hear anything and leave, you know, I still get the view either way, so it really doesn't matter to me. But uh, if you want me to go into detail and talk about each and every single one of the cards and explain the reason why I think, then here you are. And just go ahead and sit back and relax and listen. Go ahead and uh, open something else up or play some Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, hop on DN or Dev Pro and play some Yu-Gi-Oh! while you sit here and listen to me talk. Or do some homework, you know, it doesn't matter. So, uh, to keep it more built up, Despite, you know, generally with banned predictions, you go banned, limited, semi-limited, unlimited, and, you know, you go from, like, the tippy top of, like, ooh, we, these cards be banned, and you eventually trickle out to, eh, well, these cards should be unlimited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go reverse to, you know, steadily build up the anticipation for uh, what I think. But, like I said, you guys can always just go ahead and click the uh, description and see what's in there, and you guys already know what I'm talking about. But if you guys don't want to spoil yourself, don't look in that description, then we're just gonna go ahead and take it one card at a time. Uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long, but if it does, I apologize, but I like to go into detail, and I am a huge talker. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, we uh, starting off with Unlimited. I have two Unlimited cards. Uh, starting off, we have Dragon Ravine. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Konami didn't move this card last list, and I don't really don't know why. Uh, it just seemed like maybe they're just trying to take other things off, and they just kind of forgot about it. And maybe they wanted just one more format to see if there's going to be anything dragon-based uh, before they just move Dragon Ravine up off to three. And there was not a single dragon-based thing this entire format. So, uh, yeah, Dragon Ravine can come off. The Dragon Rulers are banned, and I think that everybody will be fine if Ravine went back up to three. So that's a, that's a simple one. That's a simple one. And then the next card that I have going up to three is Tragodia. Uh, now, there's no dispute. Tragodia is stronger than Gore. Gore's went up to three. Trag did not. Trag has been at two for a Kuman now. But one, who plays Trag? No, no one plays Trag. And uh, we have set precedence from the OCG as well. They also move Trag up to three. And, uh, you know, Konami Journal looks to go ahead and clean things up, move things off the list. I looked at all the other semi limited cards and I'm just like, no, nah, no, nah, there's probably a reason for that. But, you know, when it comes to Trag, even if Trag went up to three, would anybody play it? If no one's really playing Gore's, no one's really playing Trag. I mean, yeah. So yeah, that was actually pretty simple. We actually got through the limited cards fairly quickly. So uh, let's just go ahead and move on to semi-limited. So cards moving up to two. Uh, I have two semi-limited cards. Uh, starting off with actually a card that's moving up, I have Rescue Rabbit moving up to two. Uh, we have set precedence. Uh, OCG actually has three Rescue Rabbits, so there's precedence there. Uh, there's money to be made. 
Uh, as you guys know, in uh, Shining Victory, the next big pendulum-based deck is um, the uh, Draco Slayers with a nice chunk of normal monsters. So uh, that's a great way to go ahead and earn some income right there by just you know simply upping Rabbit to uh, allow that product to be stronger, that uh, that archetype, that deck. Uh, and uh, as you guys know, we have Infinity right now. And Infinity is there, but it's kind of not there, and if we can live through in the format of Infinity, we can live through a format of slow-ass Dino Rabbit. Like, if anybody wants to go ahead and take two rabbits and try to recreate Dino Rabbit, more power to you, but with the speed that Monarchs and PP and everything goes, I mean, there's really going to be no chance. So, uh, you know, it's probably still at one just because of uh, Dino Rabbit, but it could probably go ahead and move up to two, so I'm going to go ahead and predict that one. And then, an actual hit this time, you know, we're actually going to hit some cards. Uh, another card that I have going down to two. Uh, my first hit to uh, Pendulum Magicians, uh, Wisdom Eye. Uh, Wisdom Eye going down two. Uh, in the OCG, it's at one, but that's a little bit extreme. They, they went from three to one, and you haven't seen that engine since in the OCG. Uh, I think that uh, TCG will probably take a little bit slower, kind of like what they did with uh, Necros, where, you know, uh, OCG went, Bri Brio is at three, now it's down to one, while we went, you know, two. Two? Okay, fine, one. So I definitely think that they're going to go ahead and put Wizard Mind down to two. So it's going to be one of the, the hits that they're going to do for that deck. Because if it's not PP, then it's uh, then it's definitely um, Pendulum Magicians as that engine. And, uh, you know, it just seems like everybody's like, Oh my god, well, you know, PP is the top is the top tier shit, it's the best. But you kind of forget that Konami looks at the entire format. And you cannot uh, dispute that the Magicians didn't put in that work for their time, especially for a structure deck. So, uh, simply just lower the consistency of uh, the, the structure deck a little bit by putting with my down to two, and then another card that I'm gonna talk about as well. So, uh, I think it's a decent hit. You know, no one, I don't think anybody would complain if they put with my down to two. Uh, lower your consistency of doing your uh, Magician switch out a little bit. So, uh, yeah, so th there are the semi limits. So, we are already uh, blazing through. Moving on to limited. I have five, five limited cards. Uh, it's, it's, uh, limited is probably a big section, and generally a big section on the list. You know, not a lot of semi-limited cards, a lot of limited cards, and then of course a lot of banned cards as well. But uh, uh, banned, you got you got to do something pretty bad to get banned. We'll get to that. But limited, limited. There's generally a lot of cards that move to one. So, uh, starting it off, moving to one, we have. Dark Magician of Chaos, of course. Uh, he got his Rada. He got reprinted in the the, the Yu Yi uh, special edition box with the three uh, decks, and there was Demok with his Rada. So generally, when they go ahead and print the Rada version, they go ahead and unban the card. And, you know, no one's complaining about the Rada Demok, and I believe it's at three in the OCG. So uh, I I really can't say that maybe Demok is one of those cards that can move up to two and then maybe three, uh, like other cards that got Rada and got unbanned, but. Uh, definitely, he can come off there. There's no dispute there. All right, move on. Next card. This is actually a hit this time. Wavering Eyes. There's no dispute. Wavering Eyes needs to be hit, uh, but where to hit it to? Uh, it's not banned worthy. It can't be up to because if you have two, then you're still in the consistency of the plays. But if you still hit that four Wavering Eyes, you get that additional Wavering Eyes, and that's the that's the big right. Uh, not only is it you know a searcher for pretty much any Pendulum-based deck because I'm destroying my Pendulum scale search for an, any Pendulum card. Uh, but you pretty much, if you get off that four effect, if you get all four effects, that's game. That's game, and we know how powerful that is. So, uh, I don't know why they put that fourth effect that when you get all scales, you get to go ahead and get another Wavering Eyes to get another Wavering Eyes. Ridiculous. So, uh, just make the, the, the fourth effect no avoid by just limiting Wavering Eyes. That way, if you get two, that's a social card, but hey, at least it's that one. Uh, if you get three, I mean, there's a little bit of more of an incentive. You get to banish a card in the field, and of course, the burn is just meh, whatever. But uh, Wavering Eyes at 1, I think, is a fair uh, place, where it's literally the rota of any Pendulum deck. Where you get to destroy your Pendulum scales to search for any Pendulum-based monster. Uh, you know, they went to the extreme of, like, banning towers and hitting Scott to 1 when all they had to do was hit Wavering Eyes, so, yeah. And with, of course, with Wavering Eyes destroying your Pendulum scales with a Rod and A and Plush Fire and all of that shenanigans, uh, definitely uh, hitting Wavering Eyes down to 1 is a great choice. Uh, I'm going to say right now, I do not have Luster on here, so, because uh, I think that they're going to go ahead and promote Luster. Uh, and that whole archetype, especially for next set, so Luster's not going to get hit. So, uh, what's the other card that you should definitely hit if you're not going to hit Luster, especially with the enablers of Plush Fire and Rodney? Wavering Eyes, definitely. Alright, so Wavering Eyes down to one. Moving on. Uh, Performer Palace Skull, Crobat Joker. This is my other hit, and this is actually a neutral, uh, uh, a double hit. And I, I've seen precedents off of Konami, they like to do double hits. Uh, look at Rota. Rota went back down to one. Hellers did great, and they had three Rota. And then, of course, Necros played Rota for uh, Shred. 
Grota back down to one. Simple as that. So, uh, this is another double hit. Skull Card by Joker is not only good in Pendulum Magicians, which is, was arguably the second best deck uh, previous to Monarchs coming out, but also it's for PP as well in your Performer Pal uh, engine. You know, Skull Card by Joker with Sorcerer and uh, Monkey Board and all of those. The Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's mostly those three. So by lowering the consistency of Skull Card by Joker down to one, you won't open up this 18 meter searcher who can literally search for three different powerful archetypes. Um, it's I, I didn't think that this is the right choice. I don't think that uh, Monkey Board will be hit. I don't think that Sorcerer will be hit. I think it'll be Skulker by Joker. I mean, it's just a common and a structure deck, so, you know, really, who cares? So, uh, you know, PP gets a little bit hit with Skulker by Joker going down to one lower the consistency, and, uh, you know, you can't be like, alright, well, let me just sloop the hell out of, uh, uh, you know, Monkey Board and then Special Summon Sorcerer, Sorcerer Pop, get a, a, a Skulker by Joker, get a, uh, a Monkey Board, and then loop those three cards. And uh, lower the consistency of Pendulum Magicians a little bit. It's called one Skull Card Joker, two Magicians. Uh, you still have your uh, three Pendulum Call, which is actually uh, a fairly fair card. You, you play it, you just cut a card, you get two, so that's a zero out. I mean, sure, you can't pop the Pendulum Scales, but you know what? That's not a too a terrible effect. So uh, I think that Pendulum Call is fine. I think that just wasn't my down to two, and Skull Card Joker down to one would be uh, suffice enough to go ahead and address that structure deck engine. All right, uh, moving on. Next card limited down to one, Instafusion. I don't think that we need to go to an extreme like OTG and ban Norton. We don't need to go to that extreme. I think that lowering the consistency of Norton is fine enough by just hitting Instafusion. You don't hit you don't hit Norton down to one. You hit Instafusion to lower the consistency of getting the card in the main deck. So if you get that Instafusion, you summon that Norton, then more power to you, you know. But you really only get one, and of course Norton is only when he's special summoned. So if you want to go to the extremes of playing, you know, Oasis and Call the Haunted to summon back Norton from the graveyard or do your refusion shenanigans, more power to you. But your consistency will be lowered and your deck may be shaky because you only have one Instafusion. Uh, of course, we have precedence from OCG. OCG put Instafusion down to one, and then they decided, to, you know, screw that. We're just going to go ahead and ban Norton and then have three Instafusion. And uh, Instafusion didn't really see much play uh, previous to Norton, but. Uh, definitely, uh, Nor uh, Institution is a powerful card, giving you that additional summon, uh, even if there was no Norton, just giving you that additional summon for an XC or a uh, Synchro summon is just so powerful. But uh, now, since you have Norton, who's an uh, additional enabler himself to summon the monster back from the graveyard, uh, you know, people try to compare him to Wolf Bark, but Wolf Bark requires your normal summon. You go ahead and summon Wolf Bark, activate your effect, and I stop you. That's pretty much it. You know, you don't have additional normal summon. But if you do some normal summon play, I stop you. Then you just back, all right, insta fusion, Norton, Norton, some of that back, and then bam, there's a Castell off of nothing. So, definitely, uh, just lowering the consistency of insta fusion slash Norton, uh, definitely should be done. And then the last card I have going down to one is Solemn Strike. Uh, Solemn Strike should be limited down to one. I know a couple of people are saying, like, oh, we don't really see it. Like, no, you'll, you'll definitely see it. You'll definitely see it, especially with uh, Monarchs. Uh, Monarchs are really susceptible to back row. If they get hit with back row and they get their place halted, they, they can lose easily, especially with how aggressive PP is. So you're going to be seeing some Solemn Strikes. You're going to be seeing uh, striking uh, on the Monarch players. And it's really not Profit, because I know people are saying, like, oh, they're not going to hit Strike, because that has to do with Profit. It has nothing to do with Profit on this one. This has to do with game balance. And... Uh, when you look at Konami and you look at, you know, the back row, uh, cards that they hit, very powerful trap cards get hit down to one, and they pretty much stay at one. I mean, I mean, get, look at me in my eyes and tell me that Strike should remain at three, but Ring of Destruction and, and, and Compulse and stuff like that should, should be at one. No. Uh, I definitely think that Strike is, is in the exact same boat, along with Ring of Destruction, Transform Tribute, Bottomless Trap Hole, Solemn Morning, Compulse, Sol Solemn Strike. I think they're all in that same boat. You get one. Everybody gets one. And I think that's a fair choice. Uh, they really don't need to have multiple strikes to sell uh, uh, Bosch. Uh, Bosch sells within itself, so it's more of a secondary market thing. So I think that Konami will go ahead and put strike down to one just for uh, the the more the conservativeness of TCG Konami, you know. They're not a big fan of back row. Uh, we don't have a heavy storm. We don't have a, a, a harpy feather duster, so. Uh, to scale with those cards not being here. With those multiple instruction cards, we just have less back row. Simple as that. So, uh, yeah. So those are my five limited cards. So, uh, moving on to band and pretty much wrapping up, like I said, there's not a lot of cards. Usually my list predictions are really long-winded, but here? No, not really. So, band, I have two cards banned. Two cards banned. Uh, starting it off, we have our obligatory uh, rank four monster that has, it seems like one rank four monster gets banned every single list, and I don't think this list will be an exception. I have uh, uh, 
uh, Patrol Miles. Patrol Miles should be banned. Uh, rank 4 should not have access to Infinity. It's simple as that. Uh, OCG did the same thing, so we have precedence there, and no, <laughs> no. Uh, rank 4s are arguably one of the best mechanics uh, and best ranks that you could possibly have. But then you give them access to rank 5s, you give them access to, to Infinity with Nova, and you give them access to Queens, and that's where we have to start drawing the line. So. Uh, definitely Patel and Sweet Dan, we don't need it. If you want to go ahead and play a Cyber Dragon deck or a Dynamis deck just to make Infinity more proud to you, but we shouldn't have uh, Rank 4s having access to Patel Mass, especially with how quickly and how consistently we can bust out these Rank 4s. Especially, I mean, uh, Pepe is a perfect example for Mages and all of that, so yeah. And then, the last card that I have banned, because speaking of Pepe, and speaking of Perform Mages, I hit, I hit uh, Perform Pals a little bit, but I didn't hit Perform Mages yet. Uh, card banned. Uh, I bet you guys can probably guess. I have Performer Pow, Damage Juggler banned. Uh, of course, we have precedent from OCG. Uh, Damage Juggler is banned, and uh, uh, Damage Juggler is rightfully so. Right? Uh, Damage Juggler is the ringleader of the circus that is uh, Perform Ages, uh, with its enabler to go ahead and search. Uh, I mean, just think of all the decks that take uh, take aspect of the the Poor Mage engine, and just know that Damage Juggler is the core of it all. You know, you want to go ahead and play your Maneuver Light Sworn deck and mill a whole bunch? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's nice when you go ahead and mill, mill uh, you know, uh, uh, a Hat Tricker. I'm uh, not a Hat Tricker. A uh, Trick Clown, that's cool. But generally, you mill in that uh, Damage Juggler? All right, Banish, get the search. Let me go ahead and block that Wavering Knives by uh, pitching that Damage Juggler, blocking that damage. Just damage, period. Like, there was actually some people uh, in the previous format who wanted uh, Necros of Valkyrie to be hit because it blocks. Damage Juggler is the same thing, <laughs> you know? And you get a search, and you get a search, and uh, you know that uh, there's uh, people who want uh, uh, Cypher Omega to get hit because Cypher Omega has the shenanigans with Damage Juggler putting a Damage Juggler back, banish it, get a search, put it back, banish it, get a search. Yeah, it's just there's so many shenanigans with Damage Juggler. Uh, now you're probably wondering like, well, well, you know, where's the plush fire? Uh, I don't think I think if you ban it, if you ban Damage Juggler and you hit Wavering Eyes down to one, I think that's plenty. Uh, I don't think that you really need to. Uh, hit plush fire. I mean, you could still do the whole, you know, luster plush fire thing, but you know, who are you summoning? Who who are you summoning with uh, with plush fire? What hat tricker, trick clown, meh, meh. And also, we kind of hurt the the consistency of trick clown by hitting insta fusion down to one. Because of course, if you kill a uh, trick clown twice, it's gone. You know, tap. You pay a thousand, summon it back. Attack again. Unless you have something eroded from the graveyard, there's not much you can do. Of course, unless you have your Norden. Because Norton will summon it back, you exceed, and you detach, and then it will summon yourself back, and you get uh, pretty much a reset button on your trick clamp. We hit Insta Fusion down to one as well. So I don't think that plush fire needs to be hit. Uh, as long as Damage Juggler gets banned, Wavering Eyes goes down to one, and Insta Fusion goes down as well. So instead of, you know, hitting all the performance dungeon and taking out, you know, uh, uh, plush fire as well, because keep in mind, uh, they hit plush fire, they ban plush fire, but they still have three Wavering Eyes, they still have. Uh, three uh, luster, so there's a lot more to be uh, shenanigans to be had as well. Uh, to kind of think that OCG Titan took to the extreme, I think that if you just ban ban, ban damage juggler, that there's really no other uh, performance that you really want to get. So it's kind of moot in that point. But still, I think that this is uh, enough. This is plenty. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So hopefully that all my uh, uh, thoughts and stuff is close to what Konami's gonna do. I try to keep all the bias and. And try to do examples, precedents, uh, 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 future uh, product, everything is taken into consideration. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think of my balance prediction in uh, the comment section below. Looking forward to hearing what you guys think. As I said, I generally do these every single time there's around a balance prediction, and I try to think of theories and, and precedents and all that great examples, but still, in the end, uh, I'm not going to be perfect. So, I'd like to see how many I get correct on this upcoming list, hopefully, you know. It may be in March, it may be in April, and may not. We may not even get a list the entire 2016. Who knows? But uh, only Konami knows. So I guess we'll just wait and find out. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this balance prediction. If you guys want to go ahead and leave what you guys think uh, or your own balance predictions in the comment section below, I will go ahead and read it. I will answer any questions that you guys would like to ask in the comment section below. So once again, just trying to think and get Konami said it's just a theory. It really is. It, 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 but it's not a game theory. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh! theory. Thanks for watching.